Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Detroit. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. It has been a red-hot start for Austin Jackson. He has hit safely in his first five games of 2013. He comes up to play today with a solid 429 batting average. Jackson and the Tigers getting ready in the final game of the series to face the New York Yankees. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Rod Allen, glad to have you with us. Tigers in search of the sweep here this afternoon. And sometimes, Rod, you get to the ballpark, and the headline is already made for you. Today is one of those days with Justin Verlander and CC Sabathia going. Well, they're two of the best pitchers in baseball. There's no doubt about that. One left-handed. Of course, Justin Verlander, he is right-handed. Uh, both of these guys were their opening day starters. If you look back to when JV burst on the scene in 06, their first and second in wins and strikeouts. CC Sabathia was not very good in his opening start this year. Five innings, he threw over 100 pitches. He walked four in that game. Verlander, a little bit better. He got his first career win on opening day, but he needed 91 pitches in five innings to do so. Jim Leland would like to see Verlander get up over 100 pitches, maybe throw seven innings, give that bullpen a little bit of a bleed breather. And JV also has pitched some outstanding baseball right here at Comerica Park. All right, Tigers going for their first sweep of the Yankees since 2008. We'll see if they can get it here this afternoon at the ballpark. Glad to have you with us after a short break. We'll send you to the Call Sam Studios and join Shannon Hogan. But first, coming up, we'll check out Miguel Cabrera. A four hit game yesterday. Miggy and the Tigers taking on the Yankees. And it's all coming up next.
Been turning into a nice day here at the ballpark. Welcome to downtown Detroit. Yankees and Tigers go at it here in the third and final game of the series. Robinson Cano getting ready to send his Yankees into battle today. The Yankees starting lineup presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. It'll be Brett Gardner at the top and then Cano. Cano off to a slow start this year. Kevin Euclid at third. Travis Hafner the DH. Vernon Wells in left. Ichiro is in right. Their bottom three today features Cervelli, Overbay, and Jason Nix. And the Tigers starting pitcher today is Justin Verlander. He is presented by Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Uh, Justin Verlander loves pitching in this ballpark. He's a career 66 and 25 right here at Comer Met Comerica Park and has won his last seven decisions. He'll look to go a little bit deeper in this game than he did on opening day in Minnesota. Let's take a look at Tigers starting defensive alignment presented by Beaumont Health System. Tuyasa Sopo getting his first start in left field. Jackson and Hunter uh, there in center and right. Boy, have they been hot with the bats at the start of the season. Cabrera, Santiago, Infante, and Prince in the infield. And Brian Pena also getting his first start here today. He is indeed. Alex Avila gets the day off. Congratulations to the Avilas with the birth of Avery Noel. Earlier this morning, and uh, he and his wife Christina doing well. And there is Mr. Avila. And congratulations to their new addition. Uh, no doubt about that. So we are ready for baseball here this afternoon. Brett Gardner leads it off, and the first pitch of the ball game is fouled back. I called uh, Alex's dad today, Grandpa, <laughs> for the first time. How'd he take that? Uh, he's cool with it. <laughs> Brett Gardner batting a buck 50 to start the year one home run one RBI good career numbers uh, against Verlander one guy that Verlander must keep off the base paths. Gardner has outstanding speed. Lifted in the air to right. Torrey Hunter is on the move and that's how we start this one today one gone. Now Robinson Cano will step in for the Yankees. Cano after having a monster. World Baseball Classic in which he was named the MVP has gotten off to a slow start here in the regular season. Batting 111. And sooner or later you know this guy will get it going. Cano also had 344 this spring. And Robinson looks at ball one down low. Robinson is a free agent uh, after this year. And uh, once it's all said and done, he will be the highest paid second baseman in the history of the game. That's how much money he's going to get. Robinson uh, recently firing Scott Boris, his agent. Here's the 1 0. Lifted back out of play. He hooked up with your buddy. <laughs> Me and Jay Z hang out all the time. Right? <laughs> Jay Z's uh, company now is representing Robinson Cano. Rock Nation. It's the name of that company. So we'll see how that uh, partnership works out. But I would imagine there will be uh, quite a few dollars that'll be heading Mr. Cano's way, regardless of who his agent is. Here's the 1 1. One ball and two strikes. Well, Cano had a great year last year 33 home runs, scored 105 times. He was part of a very potent Yankees offense last season. Comes to the standard for second baseman, this guy has pretty much set it. 94 RBIs, hit over 300. He'll go in the air towards shallow left center field, and Tuiasa Sopo coming to the line to make the catch. And there are two gone. Well, we mentioned the Yankees have lost a lot of production, and there's no question that they have quite a few good players on the disabled list. Jeter and A Rod, and on and on. And look at the home runs they've lost. 43 homers by Curtis Granderson, another 24 by Teixeira. A Rod hit quite a few when you total them all up 194 e. combined with the guys that have left as free agents and the guys that are injured. There's Kevin Euclid, ball one inside. So they are scoring runs in different ways, or they anticipate they will this season until the majority of their injured players come back. Swing and a drive down the left field line. That ball is hooking, and it's going to go foul. Whoa. Euclid got just out in front of that one. Euclid has have been putting some pretty good swings on fastballs in this series. And that was a 90 mile power. 
90 mile per hour fastball right down the middle uh, by Verlander and Euclid almost made him pay. 219 against JV, but a couple of home runs. Almost had one there. The 1 1 pitch. Driven again. This one to left center field. That ball is hit well. Jackson on the run won't get it. It's up against the wall. Euclid has extra bases and a two out double. And Verlander must have thought that that was a fluke swing, the ball that nearly missed uh, that left field foul pole for a home run on the previous pitch. He came right back with a 91 mile per hour fastball in. Kevin Euclid drilled it in the left center field gap. He homered in that same area here a couple of days ago. Yeah, he did. He has four hits in the series now against Detroit. So he has turned out to be a very good pickup early in the season for the Yankees. Yeah, that's a fastball that Brian Pena wanted outside. And you watch the glove of Pena ever so slightly reach back over the heart of the plate. And uh, that's where uh, Euclid was able to do his damage and why he was able to do his damage. Verlander's reaction of the two out two base hit. And the two having a little conversation as well. There's a ball outside to Travis Hatton. And Brian Pena catching Justin Verlander for the very first time during the regular season. Uh, even though he caught him in spring training in some bullpens. Starting pitchers like Verlander that are well established are always working on things. During the course of spring training, so you don't really get a true look at what they're going to feature once the game starts. So expect Payne to be shook off quite a few times here early in the game by Verlander because Verlander, for the most part, controls the game when he's on the mound. Alex Avila getting the day off, and Payne getting his first Tigers start. One ball, one strike on Travis Hafner. Off the plate again, two and one. You saw the fingernails there of Pena. Uh, he has the fingernail polish on to make sure that Verlander has no difficulty seeing the signs that he's putting down. A little bit of a hazy, overcast day today. There is some cloud cover. Two and one on Travis Hafner. Two out double by Euclid. And now uh, Pena being summoned to the mound. Well, just what we. Just talked about. They don't know one another very well yet. Over the years, Hafner has seen quite a bit of Justin Verlander. Obviously, in his days with the Cleveland Indians, and 277 his career number against JV, which is really pretty good. Three home runs as well. 25 home runs against the Tigers among the active leaders. Right call on the outer edge. 2 2. Good change up there. Hafner looking for a fastball. And Verlander pulls the string on him at 84 miles an hour. Great arm speed. Ball came out of his hand very nicely. Nubbed right in front of the plate. Foul. Yankees these days sporting some guys that have had big numbers with other teams in their career, including Hafner, Euclid, Vernon Wells, and Ichiro. They've all come together this season to form the nucleus, albeit a veteran nucleus, with all the injuries they've had. It's provided some opportunities. Ten years with the Cleveland Indians for Travis Hafner. Again, the 2 2. And inside, three balls, two strikes. Good 95 mile an hour fastball from Verlander there. Ooh. Right on the edge of the strike zone. Verlander did not get the call. Full count. And the 3 2. Hit the glove for strike three. Pena holds on to it. Verlander has his first strike out of the game.
Two out double by the Yankees, so we go to the bottom of the first inning. The Tigers will take their first swings. Their starting lineup presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. And it looks like this today for Jim Leland. Austin Jackson leads it off, followed by Torrey Hunter and Miguel Cabrera. Prince Fielder batting cleanup, and Victor Martinez. Matt Tuiasisopo will get the start in left. Brian Pena, Omar Infante, and Ramon Santiago round out the bottom three. CC Sabathia is on the hill for the Yanks. Man, one of the best left handers in the game of baseball, but didn't fare all that well in opening day against the Red Sox. He walked four in that game through one, over 100 pitches and only lasted five innings, taking the loss. Good fastball, good breaking ball, really good changeup for CC Sabathia to win that fastball. Velocity is up. But against Boston five days ago, the velocity was down. We'll see which CC we have here today as Austin Jackson leads it off. And boy, has he been red hot. Jackson at 429. He's hit safely in all five this year. And a ground ball foul, third base side. It's amazing how Jackson hit the ball extremely hard all spring training long, but really didn't have a whole lot to show for it. But once the regular season has started, still consistent contact. But he's finding some holes now and he's scoring a lot of runs. Five out of nine in this series. And a ball outside, 1 1. Are you noticing anything different with Jackson or is it just a good start for him? Maturity. He just looks like uh, he belongs in the big leagues right now. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Well, maturity might be a good word to describe him because last year his numbers. Were elevated just about in every one of the major categories. Strikeouts went down. He's ahead of the count here, two and one on Sabathia, or against Sabathia, and the pitch is hammered in the air. Right center field hit pretty good, but playable. Gardner is under it, and one gone. And let's take a look at the starting defensive alignment brought to you by Tim Hortons. In the outfield, you have Vernon Wells, and Vernon Wells is off to a pretty good start. In the pinstripes, Gardner in center, Suzuki in right. Overbay, Cano, Nix, and Euclid in the infield, and Cervelli is the catcher this afternoon. Well, the uh, Yankees had to go out and get some help. Vernon Wells, part of that helped. They got him in a trade with the Los Angeles Angels. He is manning left field this afternoon. Here's Torrey Hunter. Torrey is also off to a really good start, batting 391, and really the Top two guys in the Tigers lineup have been very dynamic in the early part. Hunter as well has five hits in this series. Two and all the count. Sabathia goes six seven. 290 pounder out of Vallejo California. 32 years of age. Rolled foul two and one. CC Sabathia and Jimmy Rollins of the Philadelphia Phillies went to the same high school in Northern California. Both outstanding big league talents and CC ever since getting to the big leagues. He was a first round pick in 98 by the Indians. I mean he was an immediate winner. At the big league level and because of that he's. Getting close to 200 lifetime wins now in the major leagues. Hunter lands on the left. He can't get him out. One of the things that Hunter has been able to do, he's been able to get himself in some fastball friendly counts. And he drills that 2 1 piece of cheese there and by CC Sabathia. But let's take a look at the body of work yesterday by Torrey Hunter. He was on the base pass all afternoon long, setting up Miguel Cabrera, setting up Prince Fielder. The team had a total of 17 knocks yesterday. Hunter had three of them. And now Torrey is aboard for the middle of the lineup. Here comes Miguel Cabrera, who had four hits in the game yesterday and has now reached base safely in seven straight plate appearances. Fastball from CC on the inside corner, 0 and 1. Miguel Cabrera with a 385 career batting average against CC Sabathia. The elite guys aren't afraid of anybody, are they? No one. And we've just told you that since 
And at the beginning of the 2006 season, only Verlander has won more games than CC Sabathia in the American League. But Cabrera really against the Yankees, he plays his best baseball against them and has done so throughout his career. CC won 15 last year, was 15 and 6. The 0 2. Drilled a right field on a line. And it's going to be caught by Ichiro. You're talking about CC Sabathia's rookie season in 2001 when he finished second in the rookie of the year voting. He really should have won the rookie of the year that year, but they gave it to Ichiro Suzuki. That was Suzuki's first year. Uh, coming to the Seattle Mariners from Japan. He already played seven eight seasons over in Japan and a lot of people felt like he wasn't a true rookie, but uh, he was a rookie by playing stateside. Yeah, and I would agree with that assessment too, but Ichiro did get the award as Prince Fielder stands in. I mean, I know Japan is not the equivalent of Major League Baseball or the talent at this level, but still 10 years over in Japan does not make you a rookie. I would think. But Ichiro has gone on to prove that he is an elite player. Hall of Fame player. No doubt. Here's the 0 1. Prince sends it back out of play. 0 and 2 on fielder. Prince has been on a mission lately. Really, you can go back to the last five games of the regular season a season ago. He has just been getting it done. Two home runs on opening day here. Five RBIs. He has knocked in eight already this season. And a wave and a miss. Savathia strikes him out. The inning is over. No runs. A hit. One left. Another packed house at the ballpark today. By Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Chrysler imported from Detroit. And by New York style deli chips, all natural, extra crispy from real bagel bread. Back here at the ballpark on a gorgeous afternoon. Temperatures starting to rise now as the sun peeks through the clouds. And a good pitching matchup today. Verlander and Sabathia, no score as we head to the top of the second here at the ballpark. JV back to work facing Vernon Wells, Ichiro Suzuki, Francisco Cervelli. And Verlander's first pitch is a bit high, 1 0. Vernon Wells, 1 for 3 with a homer in the ballgame yesterday. 
Breaking ball in for a strike. One and one. You know Vernon Wells is just happy to get out of Los Angeles although that's a very good team they have in Los Angeles. You see his numbers against Verlander. He could not crack the starting lineup out there. Getting a chance to uh, rejuvenate his career here in New York with all their injuries. And it's a career that at times has produced some big numbers. Uh, most of that time with the Toronto Blue Jays. He's always been a good fastball hitter. He has himself in a good fastball hitting count as we speak. Fouled straight back 2-2. Two, two. <laughs> Vernon got a fastball from Max Scherzer yesterday that didn't do a whole lot. You saw that arm angle that Max dropped down to. That's the arm angle where the ball flattens out. And Vernon didn't miss it. That kind of play again. Here's Mr. Scherzer who got the call yesterday. His first start of the season. This is Verlander's second start of the year. He, of course, pitched on opening day. And the numbers on Max yesterday. Got the win, too. Punched out seven. Everybody available out of the Detroit bullpen today, with the exception of Drew Smiley and Darren Downs. When I got to the ballpark today, I saw Max getting his running in. Running through the concourse. Running up and down the stairs. Did you go run with him? I did not. Had I known that uh, he was running, I may have, uh, you know, brought uh, some jogging shoes and got after it with him. I'm not buying it. <laughs> There's ball four and a leadoff walk to Wells. Second base runner for the Yankees. And that's going to bring up Ichiro. Well, the Yankees off to a slow start. One and four. The Tigers at three and two. Ichiro just one for 14, which adds up to an 071 average so far. And Cabrera at third base. Really playing in because of the bunting ability of Ichiro Suzuki. Ichiro is hitless in his last 12 consecutive at bats. Vernon Wells, the leadoff walk here in the second. Draws the throw. There was a time when Wells would run a lot in Toronto, but over the years, hamstring problems developed. Another throw, and he easily gets back. Ichiro's had good numbers against JV, 309 lifetime. He's even homered against him. And when you look at Ichiro and you see that he puts up or did his first 10 years 200 hits every season you don't think of power when you think of Ichiro but those that have been around him through the years have told us if he wanted to he definitely could hit 20 plus homers. He was pretty good before he left to Japan to come here and uh, when he got here as you mentioned first 10 years in the major leagues in the United States 200 or more hits. A lot of those infield hits, but he does spray the baseball all around the ballpark. Bouncing ball to short. Santiago to his right. He'll get one. And that's all. Ichiro is aboard on the fielder's choice. One of the things that uh, Jim Leland wanted Verlander to concentrate on a little bit more this year, and that was be. Uh, holding base runners on, especially the guys that can run. And, and each row would fall into that category. So we'll see just how much attention uh, Verlander decides to pay to Suzuki. Suzuki last year stole a 20, a total of 29 bases. Before that, just about every year, he was 40 plus. Father time eventually catches up to you, and so the numbers have decreased a little bit. But here are his career numbers and a percentage of 82%. 
Ball inside to Francisco Cervelli. Right. Each are all very fast, but also very intelligent. And he always seems to pick the right pitches to run on. And that would be breaking balls and change ups. And he knows that Verlander on any given day will throw you lots of off speed pitches. Drilled on a line toward left, and Tuiasa Sopo won't get it. It'll get by him and go all the way to the wall. Ichiro rounding third. He comes home, and he will score. It's a double and an RBI for Francisco Cervelli. Cervelli got a fastball that was up and in, and he pulled his hands in very close to his body and absolutely drilled this ball into the outfield. Tuiasa Sopo took a little bit of a banana route in left field. And had he gone directly toward the baseball, he may have been able to catch it. Maybe not. The ball was drilled. Tuiasa Sopo getting his first start in left here this afternoon. And Cervelli knocks in a run, his fourth RBI of the year. That'll bring up Lyle Overbay. In there for a strike 0 and 1. Second double of the ball game for the Yankees. Overbay takes low. One ball and one strike. Verlander has won each of his last seven decisions at home. And when you look at his career numbers at home, they're awfully gaudy. He's 66 and 25. ERA is at about three. Waving a miss. One, two. One of those starts was against the Yankees. Pitched eight innings, struck out 14 uh, Yankees in August of last year. And that remains his career high, his single game high in strikeouts, 14. But a 3.00 ERA in this ballpark, lifetime. In the air, toward left. Tuiasa Sopo coming over. Two gone. And that will leave it up to Jason Nix. Nix has had to play because of the injury to their starter, Eduardo Nunez. If you look at Nix's spring numbers, Nix is not a shortstop by trade, but Jeter. On the disabled list, he has not played this year. And you mentioned Nuke, uh, Nunez being hit the other day by Doug Fister still on the mend. So Nick's pressed into duty at shortstop. There was some hope that Nunez would be able to go today, and uh, Joe Girardi was tardy in filling out his lineup card, waiting to see if Nunez could go, but in the end, he couldn't. So Nix gets another opportunity. 0 for 5 in the series. Here's the 0 1. A little bit outside. One ball, one strike on Jason Nix. Yankees get a run here in the second. RBI double by Cervelli. Verlander taking his time on the hill now. One ball, one strike on Knicks. He breaks one outside and low. Two and one the count. Verlander led the American League in innings pitch last year. Almost 240 innings. He does that every year. Led the league in strikeouts for the second consecutive season. Here's the 2 1. That is driven deep toward left field. Tui Asasopo is back to the track wall and gone. The number nine hitter, Jason Nix, has gone deep. And the Yankees lead 3 to nothing. A 
a no doubter off the bat of Jason Nix his first of the year. And Verlander threw him a changeup and a 2 1 count. And the changeup stayed up right around the belt buckle. And when Nix does find the seats, it's usually in that direction. He absolutely clobbered that changeup there. So it's a 3 0 lead now for the Yanks. Cervelli doubles in a run and Nix with a two run shot. Here's the top of the lineup, Brett Gardner. Three runs on three hits for New York. Strike one on Gardner. And for the first time this season, the Tigers failed to score first in a ball game. Here's the 0 1. Slap back out of play. No balls, two strikes. Gardner fly out to right field his first time up hit 292 this spring. And they missed most of last year with an elbow problem that required surgery. Sprays one on the ground left side fielding there is Cabrera. Nice play got it. Fielder able to hold on to the back of his big toe. Big inning though for the Yanks. In a big start for the Yankees, they put up three against Justin Verlander, including a home run by the number nine hitter Jason Nix. And so the Tigers now will try and chip away as we go to the bottom of number two. The way the Tigers' bats have been booming the last few days here at Comerica Park, and the way that they hit here overall, and the confidence they play with in this yard, Tisa Sabathia, uh, he knows beyond a shadow of a doubt he's going to have to stay on top of his game all afternoon if he's going to beat this Tigers team here in Comerica Park. Here is switch hitting Victor Martinez to begin things. DHing again today for Detroit. Martinez at 176. And Sabathia brings it home. It's a fastball strike going one. You know, these two were once teammates when they were both playing for the Cleveland Indians. When they both came up, both. Had immediate success in the major leagues. Victor was winning batting titles in the minors. The 0 1. Wave it a miss. 0 2. So Cleveland talking about Victor Martinez before the game today, saying that you can see Victor's starting to come around now. He is 
looking more and more locked in. His average isn't quite there yet, as we mentioned, 176, but he's hit the ball hard. Here's the 0-2. High towering fly ball, shallow left. Vernon Wells coming in. And one gone. Well, it is opening day for the kids today at the ballpark. With more on that, let's check in with Justin White. Today is kids' opening day here at Comerica Park, and as part of the festivities presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, there is a pregame clinic on the field. Kids getting to exercise as well as learning some valuable baseball skills. Now they're all up here sitting in their very own section, getting to watch the Tigers and the Yankees and Justin Verlander against CC Sabathia. I'd say that's a pretty good day at the ballpark. Yeah, I would as well. Thanks, Justin. Two of the premier pitchers in the major leagues going at it today. The Yankees have gotten to JV so far. Matt Tuias is Sopo the batter. Sabathia ready with the 0 1. And a ball down low, one ball, one strike. Tuias is Sopo has had only one at bat so far. He's 0 for 1. He provides an interesting contrast to Andy Dirks out in left. Here's the 1 1 pitch. The difficult thing for a guy like Tui Asasopo is when you do get your chances, it's typically going to be against a tough left. Yes, it is. And it is today against Sabathia. 26 years of age, Tui Asasopo. At Bellevue, Washington. That's a nice part of the country. Bellevue, Washington. The 1 2. Line drive to left, base hit. Tuias Sopo with a one-out single. Also the second Tigers hit of the game. It's a changeup that uh, CC Sabathi is about to feature here to uh, Tuias Sopo, but he didn't make it to the location that he really wanted it to be. Wanted that ball to be down. And well off the plate, and he just got too much plate in Tuiasa Sopo with that long bat able to reach out and hit a seed back to left field. There's Brian Pena. Ball one. Pena's first start of 2013. Hit three homers this spring, knocked in seven. Pena will serve as the primary backup to Alex Avila. Ball high. Two and home. Pena was the backup to Salvi Perez in Kansas City last year. He finds himself backing up Alex Avila here in Detroit. Brian Pena's got some sock in his bat. And in a fastball count, if CC decides to throw him a fastball, he can find the gaps with it. Ball high. Got the fastball, but it missed way up. Brian, 31 years old and born in Havana, Cuba. He's been with the Braves, the first team that he broke in with the big leagues in, and then, of course, went to KC the last four years. There's a strike call, three and one. You can carve out a pretty good niche in the major leagues, can't you, as a backup catcher if you've got some skills? Yes, you can. It's not a bad gig if you can get it. And you takes another strike and the count fills now at three and two just about every single fastball that CC has featured so far this afternoon has been 90 miles an hour and above. He's touched 93 and that's the one thing he did not have in his opening start against the Boston Red Sox did not have his good fastball. Bouncing ball right side Cano spins to second one and no relay. Fielder's choice. Hey, don't forget to join us Tuesday when the Tigers welcome in the Toronto Blue Jays, much improved Toronto Blue Jays. Coverage begins at noon with Tigers Live on Fox Sports Detroit. Tigers and Jays Tuesday at noon right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Revamped pitching rotation. They've got a whole lot of different talent in that starting lineup. That'll be a fun series. Here is Omar Infante with two outs. Infante batting in the eight slot. 
He in the lineup here today with Santiago batting nine. Omar off to a nice start as well. 429. And you really can't overstate the importance of getting some of that offensive production in the bottom of your lineup. Turn things over to guys like Jackson and Hunter and give them opportunities to drive in runs. Or continue possible big innings. Ball low, 1-1. One, one. Jim will uh, be able to do a lot of things with Infante batting in the bottom of that batting order. He can bunt for a hit. He has tremendous hand-eye coordination, so Jim not afraid to put a hit and run on with Infante. And of course, Infante is an outstanding fastball hitter himself. Just about every single right-handed batter so far today, CC Sabathia has stayed away with that 90 mile per hour fastball. 20 strikes, 10 balls, a total of 30 pitches so far for Sabathia. And the 2 1. And he'll get back out of play. 2 2 on Infante. Omar already has given the Tigers two big RBIs at the bottom of that lineup. And Leland mentioning today how he loves the dynamic of Omar, then Jackson, then Torrey. When he bats Infante ninth, 9 1 2. That gives you a little bit of speed on the bases. For a team that really is not speed oriented. Low three and two on Infante. Three nothing Yankees have the lead. We're in the bottom of the second here at Comerica. First home series of the regular season. Tigers in search of the sweep. Knicks with a homer. Part of the early offense for the Yanks. Runner goes on 3 2 and a swing and a miss. So the Tigers get a hit, leave a man, and you're watching Tigers Baseball today, presented by Bell Tire. Arby's try the mighty taste of Arby's new mighty minis today Arby's slicing up freshness and by AT&T U-verse the wireless receiver only from AT&T U-verse visit AT&T.com slash free your TV rethink possible let's get you caught up with the Yankees a second inning when they scored three runs you had Francisco Cervelli getting a 1 0 fastball drilled in the left center field for a double and a run driven in and then the 2 1 count Jason Nix number nine hitter got a change up that Verlander didn't locate very well and Nix has lots of power to left field and he demonstrated some of the power on that pitch. 
two innings, three hits, three runs. The home run by Nix, one walk, one strikeout for Verlander. Robinson Cano will lead things off for the Yankees as we go to the third. It'll be Cano, Euclid, Hafner. Two, three, and four in Joe Girardi's lineup. Cano is 0 for 1. Fly ball. Back in the first inning. 0 and 1 on Cano. Talking about his exploits in the World Baseball Classic during spring training. The MVP for the winning Dominican team and he hit 469 couple of homers. But so far it's not translated to the start of the regular season. A swing and miss and chase one there 0 and 2. Don't see Robbie climb the ladder very often and chase fastballs like that last one from Verlander. Takes an extra second or two to get back into the box. And a bouncing ball towards short. Santiago on the backhand. One gone. Back to the studio we go now for a game break. There's Mickey York. All right, Mick, thank you. The Red Sox off to a three and two start this year. Here's a ball outside. What do you think about R.A. Dickey pitching in the dome? Do you think uh, that's going to make any difference? I do think it's going to make a difference. I don't think that uh, he is going to be as good as he was last year pitching for the Mets. Uh, the Mets, their ballpark in New York is very pitcher friendly and it's outdoors. Of course, when you're indoors where he's pitching now in the dome, the knuckleball does not knuckle as much because there's not a whole lot of wind and that ballpark in Toronto is very hitter friendly. So I just don't think uh, that he's going to have that type of year this year and he's in an American League. So American League better hitters as far as I'm concerned. Yeah it's a whole laundry list of reasons why it may not be a Cy Young type season this year. Meanwhile Euclid has gone to three and oh he might be swinging. He is not strike one three and one two base hit for Euclid back in the first was stranded though after Hafner struck out. Drilled again but it's going to be pulled back into the seats. Euclid makes some pretty good contact in the series. It's loud, isn't it? It really is. He had a good spring for them, too. He was one of their best hitters in spring training. So apparently he went to spring training in real good shape, real good frame of mind, and so far performing very well. Yankees inked him to a one year deal. That was in December. And he lost him ball four. One on, one out. Second walk given up by Verlander today. It'll bring up Travis Hafner. He struck out against Verlander. That ended the first inning. One outside to Hafner. Last year, his season consisted of just 66 games for the Cleveland Indians. He spent more time on the disabled list than he did on the field. Knee problems, back problems. He is hopeful that those maladies are behind him this year. Strike call. And with that inviting porch at Yankee Stadium, you would think would be a good fit. This guy has hit a lot of home runs in his career. He also has that uh, semi wide open stance, which means he's kind of looking to turn on the baseball. Numbers on Verlander 50 in the pitch count now. Indians had themselves a guy that 
routinely would hit 30 homers, not get 100 runs every year. Had some big seasons at Progressive Field. Shattered bat, little looper into right, base hit. So move Euclid to second, and the Yankees have something going now here in the third. And Travis hit that ball right off the end of the bat. So the Yankees have their fourth hit, and that's going to set up Vernon Wells, who had a base on balls back in the second. Vernon Wells, dead pull hitter. If you're Justin Verlander and you spot the fastball outside or you're breaking balls away from Vernon, pretty good chance he might hit the ball right to Santiago. 0 oh 1. And if he does that, you can turn the double play and get yourself out of the inning. It was right at the end of spring training that the Yankees traded for Vernon Wells, March 26th from the Angels. That is popped up back behind home plate and back to the seats it goes. The, uh, the Angels, of course, have a lot of outfielders, and Vernon found himself really out of a job there. Peter Borges, Mike Trout, Josh Hamilton coming over. Josh Hamilton off to a, a rough start in uh, Los Angeles, but he'll hit before it's all said and done. He's just uh, way too talented. But his former club, their manager Ron Washington, walked pool holes three times intentionally yesterday to get to Josh Hamilton. Well, that certainly didn't happen very often in Texas. New. Remember the start that Pujols got off to last year with the Angels, and that eventually he caught fire. One ball, two strikes. And a ball inside. That's a breaking ball right there that uh, Pena called for. Verlander agreed to. And they wanted it down and away, but he missed up and in with the breaking ball. Verlander still looking for that ground ball. And if he throws a quality breaking ball at the bottom of the zone or a changeup, he can get that ball from Vernon Wells. Lifted in the air on the infield. Cabrera calling for it. Infield fly rule. Batter is automatically out. Two gone. And now Verlander a chance to get out of this mess here by getting Ichiro. He bounced into a force back in the second, then eventually scored a run on the Cervelli double. Three runs, four hits for the Yankees. No runs, two hits for Detroit. 0 and 1. So Ichiro now is over his last 13. First 10 years in the big leagues, he reached the 200 hit plateau every single season. 110 gold gloves. Fouled away. And part of his arsenal was a terrific throwing arm. In fact, when he was in Japan in his early days as a professional in Japan, he actually pitched a little bit and threw mid 90s. Trying to pick up Euclid and Hafner here in the third, 3 0 in favor of New York. In the air, right field. Torrey Hunter going back, still going back to the warning track to pull it in. The side retired. No runs, a walk, and a single. Two men left.
Party in an upcoming Tigers game, 2013 group picnics and party suites are on sale right now. Groups of 15 or more get discounted tickets to select home games. Call 313-471-BALL or check it out online at Tigers.com. Tiger fans enjoying a beautiful afternoon here at the ballpark today. Right now it's 3-0 in favor of the Yanks. See if the Tigers can change that. Santiago follows away the first pitch. Santiago getting the start at short today in place of Johnny Peral to his spring numbers 250 this spring. Jackson and Hunter to follow against CC Sabathia. Strike call. 0 and 2. Santiago's first three at bats yesterday were not all that good. He seemed to struggle and show some rustiness, but that last at bat he hit the ball hard. And Jim Leland getting him. Uh, a few more at bats in this game today. The 0-2. Way high. Wouldn't chase. And CC struggled with his fastball in his last start against the Boston Red Sox. And it appears that he's come out today really wanting to establish that pitch. 72 of the 36 pitches he's thrown, 72% that is, have been fastballs today. Line drive to left field sinking and caught on a slide by Vernon Wells terrific play Vernon Wells a center fielder by trade and he has won gold gloves in his career when he was playing for the Toronto Blue Jays gets a real nice jump comes in in sliding fashion and takes a base hit away from Santiago. Santiago thought man. That was my first hit of the year. Keep swinging it up. Keep swinging it like that. You'll get your fair share. Here's Jackson. Ball one for the most part. Sabath has been pretty good. Seven of ten now in first pitch strikes. Malloy missed there to Jackson. AJ fly to center field his first time up. One ball one strike and we were talking about how the top of the Tigers lineup has really been ignited. Here is the farmers insurance report card on AJ and Tory Hunter. These are updated numbers and Jackson just continues uh, to get better and with maturity and uh, Tory Hunter is playing like he's young again. He was one of the best number two hitters in baseball last year. Second half of the year. This had to be what. Dave Dombrowski had in mind when he went out and got Torrey Hunter to plug into that two spot in the lineup. I think he envisioned these two guys clicking like this. Well, Tigers really haven't had a good number two hitter, and this is no disrespect to the other guys that have been there since Polanco left. Yeah, he was awfully good. Polanco could handle the bat, move guys over. He didn't strike out, played every day. Polanco was tremendous in a Tigers uniform. Meanwhile, the count has gone to three and one on Austin Jackson. And he lost him, ball four. Sabanthia's first walk. Austin Jackson just continues to get on base any way he can. Hunter singled in the first inning. And that was average at 417. Ball one and Sabathia again missing up. That's going to bring Cervelli out to the hill. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in today's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Here's the 1 0. Swing and a miss. Good pitch by Sabathia. And Torrey Hunter looking for the fastball after he had just walked Austin Jackson. And fallen behind him, and Cervelli calls for the breaking ball, and real nice execution there by CC.
Another change up. Same Way out result. of the front. And the count is one and two. CC's best year in terms of victories was 2010 when he won 21 games. It's a circle change. The thing that sells the change up is the fact that and you know, the ball is in the palm of the hand not out on the fingertips and you throw it with the same arm speed but because of where you're holding it and the velocity decreases. Two and two. Hunter has multiple hit games in four of his first five. He has a shot to do it again here today with already a single to his credit. And a bouncing ball to short, ranging to his right. Nix fires to second one. Relay. Got him ten. Hunter beats it out. Second baseman Robinson Cano about as smooth as they come at second base. Takes very little time with the exchange, uh, getting the ball back on its way to first base. But Hunter with his speed, Yankees not able to turn it over. Robinson Cano never looks like he's in a hurry to do anything on a baseball field. Here is Miguel Cabrera. Hit the ball hard, but he's 0 for 1. Chopper back up the middle. Here's Cano again, ranging behind the back. The back had it flip for the out. And the Tigers are done here in the third. Afternoon as we go to the top of the fourth at Comerica Park, and it is time now for the AT&T trivia question. Here it is: Who are the four former Yankees catchers who went on to manage the New York Yankees? There have been four of them. Okay, three because you're looking at one. So give me the other three. That's your trivia question. I'll give you a little hint. There's a Tigers tie to one of them. So there's a total of four. Good luck with that. We'll get you the answer in a little while. Francisco Cervelli will start things off. Hey, did you know it's kids opening day today, Rod? I did know that. They have a blast here at Comerica Park, and rightfully so. All decked down in their Tigers gear. The sun for most of the day has been trying to peek through the clouds. It's been uh, pretty pleasant here, nonetheless. Verlander back to work. First pitch popped up. 
right side of the infield in his shallow right field. Hunter coming on now, and he'll make the play. And Cervelli is gone. One pitch, one out, just the way Verlander likes it, and that'll bring up Lyle Overbay. Verlander surrendered an RBI double to Cervelli in the second, a two run shot to Jason Nix in the second as well. That's where all of the scoring is taking place. Strike one. Over Bay. Arizona and Atlanta last year. Strike call. Make it 0 2. And the veteran first baseman. Filling in for Mark Teixeira, who has that wrist problem. Now the 0 2 pitch. Mentioned Verlander led the league in innings pitched last year. Keep in mind, the last two years he's added a few more innings because of postseason play. In fact, almost 50 more innings combined the last two years on top of his regular season numbers. A little bit outside, one ball, two strikes. And sometimes we tend to forget that extra workload in the postseason as well. It's one of the reasons why the pitching coach Jeff Jones, not only with Verlander, but the entire staff. Uh, he had them all back off a couple of weeks and not throat as early as they had in previous years. Overbay goes down swinging. Well, I guess it's a good problem to have. Good circle change up here by Justin Verlander to Lyle Overbay. And sometimes it's not the location, but simply taking a few miles per hour off of a pitch. That kind of looks like a fastball coming out of his hand can get you that swing and miss. As Jeff Jones does a marvelous job with this Tiger staff. Strike one to Jason Nix, who hit a two run shot back in the second. Ball one strike. Nix was 0 for 7 prior to that home run in the second inning. Skies this one in the air. Tory Hunter coming on as well again. And a 1 2 3 inning for Justin Verlander on our way to the bottom of the fourth.
Comerica Park in the fifth. He climbed the ladder against Boone Logan, the left-hander, got a 95-mile-per-hour fastball and hit it out of the yard. And then in the seventh inning, he got himself a breaking ball and hit that one about 400 feet. One on the line, one the majestic fly ball home runs that you'll see Prince hit on occasion. And fielder fanned in the first. He'll bat again here in the fourth. And he looks at a breaking ball outside 1 0. Prince also homered against CC Sabathia last year when and the Tigers made their first visit to Yankee Stadium. These two were teammates for a half a year in Milwaukee. Here's the 1 0. Two balls, no strikes. Four for 12 now against CC in his career with that aforementioned home run. We have shown these numbers before, but what makes Prince such a really good hitter is the fact that lefties, even with that big swing of his, don't seem to bother him all that much. And he doesn't strike out very often either. Trying to get it started here in the fourth. Yanks lead 3 0. Now the 2 1. 2 2 on Prince Fielder. A well spotted fastball right there. And by CC. Inside black at 91. Oh, ooh, wave him miss. Second time he's done that to him today. He set him up perfectly. Inside fastball at 91, and he comes back and he pulls the string with a really good curveball. Prince out on that front foot, and back to the dugout he goes. That'll bring up Victor Martinez. Talking about Sabathia in the last inning that he was pitching, although he is cruising toward 200 lifetime wins, 191 right now. He's won only, or he's won 20 games in a season only once, and that was back in the 2010 campaign when he won 21. But he's always in the mid to high teens every single season. Signed a big contract with the Yankees. In fact, back in December of 08, it was a seven year deal, and they added another one onto that. Two balls and no strikes. Sabathia has made very few mistakes in the game today. Victor Martinez does not agree with Brian Onora. With that last fastball, he felt like it was down. CC has been down there all afternoon long. He has not missed very much with his location. And that's one reason why Onora may have given CC the strike there. Victor not buying it though. It's been a lengthy conversation between the two. Three and one. Tuyasa Sopo waiting on deck. Here's the 3-1 pitch to center field and hit hard. Gardner going back. Two gone. Victor is very close to busting out. <laughs> now Tuyas Sopo. He had a single back in the second inning. Tigers really haven't had too many opportunities. Base hit in the first, base hit in the second, walk in the third, but for the most part, Sabathia has been able to keep them at bay. Strike one on Tuyasa Sopo.
Jim Leland had a pretty good line uh, before the game today on Tui Asasopo getting his first start in left field here at Comerica. The wind blowing pretty good here this afternoon. Leland said, I gave him a map, I gave him the keys, and I said, good luck. You know, Jim said that, but, and I agree with him totally. It's tough to play left field here, but it's easier to play here than it is to play in spring training. Why is that? Wind, sun, no clouds. If you can play in the Cactus League or if you can play in the Grapefruit League and you can play good in spring training, you can play in any outfield up here. Here's the one two pitch. A little bit outside two and two. One of the things Leland would like to make sure that Tui Asasopo does is keep his swing compact. He has a a habit every now and then of lengthening that swing, and that's when he gets into trouble. Had a solid single off Sabathia back in the second inning. Low again. Three and two. CC has such confidence in the secondary pitches today. He might just come back with a curveball here or. That fading change up to two losses so far. Change up. And he missed with it. Tuyasa Soko took it for ball four, and the Tigers get a two out base run. Hey, you can vote for your Tigers. McDonald's player of the game is presented by the new premium McRat. Using your cell phone, text Tigers, followed by a space, then the player's uniform number to 37338 or vote online at foxsportsdetroit.com. So here's Brian Pena with a two out base runner. And he takes strike one. For Sabathia today. Ball strike ratio 65 pitches. Another strike now it's 0 and 2. It took a close one, but it missed. One ball and two strikes. Sabathia in his first start against the Red Sox threw 102 pitches, gave up four runs in five innings. Just off the plate again, two balls, two strikes. Pena reaching on a fielder's choice in the second. Tigers locked him up with a free agent deal last December. On the ground left side deep in the hole. Nix has it. His throw not in time. Midfield hit for Brian Pena. Nice range by Nix. He was not going to get Pena at first base, so he goes to second base, and I'm surprised that Tuiasa Sopo did not slide. Uh, when you're running full speed toward the bag, and if you don't slide, you have a tendency to come off the bag. And had he done that, it would have been easy for Cano to apply the tag to him. That is the first Tiger to reach second base in this game. Let's see if they can get him home now. Infante the batter. Ball one. Omar struck out against Sabathia back in the second. One of three punch outs that Sabathia has. The majority of the pitches that he has thrown to Infante today have been off speed pitches. Struck him out with an off speed pitch as well. And now Cervelli out to the mound as Sabathia, who got two quick outs of this inning, is now creating some trouble here. Walk infield hit and now a 2 0 count. 
By the way, make sure to visit your life-size Detroit Tigers located in the Jefferson lobby of the Renaissance Center. For more information on April and the D, you can visit FoxSportsDetroit.com. In the meantime, uh, head on to the Renaissance to see the uh, life-size bobbleheads of Justin Verlander and Miguel Cabrera. Two on, two out. Toward right field slicing. Let you roll watch this one sail back into the seats. Another great crowd here today. An opening weekend against the Yankees. And uh, we talked about this before, Rob, but the numbers don't dip after opening day here. They do not. Uh, Tigers have announced they've already sold over 2 million tickets for. 2013 and before it's all said and done I would not be shocked if they were at three million again as they were last year. Popped him up foul ground over Bay toward the railing. Ooh, off, I believe a camera down there. But are you okay? Told you that uh, Omar Infante for the most part today has gotten a lot of breaking balls from CC Sabathia. And because of that, maybe thinking about a breaking ball. Here's a 2 1 fastball. Omar very seldom tardy on fastballs at all. But a little tardy on this one. Two and two. Sixty one percent of the pitches that he's thrown today of the 73, 61 percent fastballs. Off the plate, Brian Onora took a long look at it, and Infante is still alive. So with two outs, you'll get the added benefit of a little movement down the base pass here. Tiasa Silpo and Pena will both be on the move. Santiago on deck. And the 3 2. Driven in the air toward left, but straight at Vernon Wells. And that is that for Detroit. No runs, a walk, an infield hit. Two men left. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. A concourse full of Tigers fans here this afternoon. Another great crowd at the ballpark. Yankees on top. Three to nothing as we go to the top of the fifth inning here in downtown Detroit. And what has turned out to be a nice day? Justin Verlander surrendered three runs in the second. And so far, the Yankees have uh, been able to hold on to that lead. Two runs shot by Jason Nix, RBI double by Cervelli. So it's been the bottom of the lineup that has done the damage against JB. And for the Yanks, it'll be Brett Gardner to start things off. 
Verlander had himself a one two three four. He's thrown 68 pitches to this point. Gardner Cano and Euclid. Ball one. Verlander threw 91 pitches in Minnesota on Monday. And a couple of days later, Jim Leland said Verlander could go up to 110, 115 in his next outing. And every, if everything went okay. Skip was also saying that sometimes when you look at pitch counts, you have to be careful because if they were 110 very stressful pitches, or a good portion of them were, that carries more weight. It's a great point. And we see that oftentimes where guys have to battle through certain innings. There's a wave and a miss. Two and one. Gardner is 0 for 2, fly ball and a ground out. They've had a base runner in every inning but the fourth. And the 2 1. Heading toward the corner, Tuiasa Sopo, oh, and he won't get there. He gave it a, an attempt. And he just met the left field wall for the first time. Two balls, two strikes on Brett Gardner. Fouled away. Gardner is one of those guys who's had to fight for everything throughout his career. He didn't even have a scholarship to go play college ball. He walked out at the College of Charleston and made their team. Had some good seasons, but still was not drafted after his junior year. Where players are eligible. And if you're not drafted out of your uh, after your senior year of high school, you have to wait after your junior year, correct, of uh, college play? Correct. The Gardner does have that one thing that a lot of coaches, managers love, and that's speed. He can run. Never goes in slumps. Verlander missed. Green two. Justin thought he had him struck out. 75 now for Verlander. That's a pop up. Left side of the infield. Santiago for the out. One gone. How about since 2006 for Justin Verlander? First got to the big leagues. Here are the uh, best pitchers in that span. And Jared Weaver, Halliday, CC Sabathia, who we're watching today. Boy, Roy Halliday has had his struggles. Cano lines one to right field, a base hit. His first hit this afternoon. Cano keeps that bat in the strike zone a long, long time. He appeared to be fooled a little bit on this changeup. Uh, the body was out in front just a little bit, but his hands, they stay back. And he just keeps those hands in the strike zone so long. What a pretty swing. Looked like a young Rod Carew right there. A lot of similarities. Here's Kevin Euclid. Chopped foul. Euclid has the same batting stance that he had in Boston, but a much different look. Uh, he typically had a lot of facial hair in Boston. Now with the Yankees, clean cut. Almost don't recognize him. But that very familiar batting stance. Oh, 
Cano with a one out single. Five hits for the Yankees in this game. Here's the strike call. JD with a breaking ball to make it 0 2. Slapped to right center field. Ball's hit pretty well. Hunter goes over in the gap. And retreating is Cano. Two gone. Tory just glides to the baseball. Nine gold gloves on his mantle. Takes great routes. Gets tremendous jumps. Got his first assist yesterday throwing out Brennan Bosch. At home plate, he had 14 of those last year playing right field for the Angels. I wonder what gives a guy like Hunter, or really any big leaguer, a bigger thrill or more joy, knocking in a run with a base hit or taking one away by throwing a guy out at the plate. Base hit. <laughs> it's just the knocks up. Getting them RBIs. That's how you get paid. <laughs> Mom will get them new shoes. <laughs> Throwing guys out at the plate ain't getting you any you new shoes, are they? <laughs> Swing it to this. And here's that throw. Look at, look at how he gets behind this ball, though. That is textbook. I mean, he knows there's going to be a play. He gets behind the baseball. And then as he's approaching the baseball, he gets his momentum going to where he's going to throw it and throws a one hop strike to a beat. You kids at home. That play right there is exactly the way that you get yourself behind the baseball when you have to throw it. Sometimes you don't have time to set yourself like that. But if you think about setting your feet, then more often than not, you'll be able to do it. Torrey now with 112 outfield assists, which is fourth among actives in the major leagues. That is driven down the right field line. Gonna go way foul though, but almost hit a long way. Yankees only have five hits. But uh, seems like more. They've squared up some balls today. A couple of doubles, a homer, and a couple of singles. A total of five for the Yanks. After had a single in the third. Swing and a miss. Hafner's out of there, so are the Yankees. No runs to hit one left in Tigers baseball today, presented by Bell Tire.
here at the ballpark the AT&T trivia question remember we asked you a couple of innings ago who are the four former Yankees catchers that have gone on to manage the Yankees Joe Girardi is one of them the other three are Yogi that's two you got Bill Dickey and Ralph Haupt the former Tigers manager there's your four Tigers trying to get the bats going here they'll have Santiago Jackson and Hunter and he shows butt looks at a ball high. That's the back that you brought his eight game today. Velocity with the fastball. Not all that impressive. It's been right around 92 all afternoon long, but the location has been outstanding. Lifted towards center field. Gardner ranging left. Santiago is out. Top of the order now, Austin Jackson. On base again with the base on balls back in the third. The average at 409 this year. Today's starters, Verlander and Sabathia, are two of the better pitchers in the major leagues after their team has lost a game. Following a loss, both of them have really good numbers. Here's the 1 0 to Jackson, and it's in for a strike. Check these numbers out. Following a team loss last year, Sabathia was 7 and 1, Verlander was 9 and 4. Outstanding ERAs as well. Here's the 1 1 offering. Checked it. Didn't go. Oh, yes, he did. I take it back. Hunter Wendelstead said, Yep, he went around. Close. I don't know. That's real close. Could have gone either way. And the one two. Tigers have only three hits in this game a single by Hunter in the first, single by Tuyas Sosopo in the second, and a single by Pena, an infield hit back in the fourth. Otherwise, it's been all CC. Sabathia knew that his margin for air would be slim today with Justin Verlander pitching for the Tigers. Just like every pitcher knows when they go up against Verlander, you better bring your A game. You can't give up many runs because he's not going to give up very many. And he walked him. That's another base on balls for Jackson, his second of the game. Third overall for Sabathia. CC had some control problems his last start against the Boston Red Sox. He walked four in that contest. Jackson's on base percentage was 500 coming in. He's been on base two more times today. Here's Hunter with one out. And Sabathia now has to navigate through the more difficult part of the Tigers lineup. You got Cabrera. Lurking on deck. Hunter looks at strike one. Torrey now six out of 11 in this series. And he is inching closer and closer to 2,000 major league hits. He needs four more. In the air to shallow right field. Cano called off by Ichiro. Hunter retired. That'll bring up Cabrera. 0 for 2 for Miggy today. 
lined out his first time up hit into a force back in the third. And he shoots it on the ground his second Cano gobbles it up. Plenty of time to throw out Cabrera side retired no runs a walk one left and we travel to the six. More on Matt Tuiasasopo. Let's check in with Justin White. Hey, Mario. Yeah, Matt Tuiasasopo making his first start at Comerica Park as a member of the Tigers. And how he ended up with the Tigers is a really interesting story. Back in November, he actually sent an email to Dave Dombrowski basically saying, Hi. I'm Matt, and I'm interested in being a part of your organization. A couple of weeks later, he got an invitation to spring training, and he hit so well down the stretch that he ended up making the squad. Matt's father and brother both played in the NFL. So, guys, this is a guy with some athleticism. The Tigers hoping he can add something to their team this season. Hey, uh, before you go, Justin, I wanted to ask you, well, why are you wearing an orange tie today? Well, not just because I'm here covering the Tigers game, but because I represent my Syracuse Orange, <laughs> win or lose, and yes, they lost to Michigan last night, but I'm still going to stick by them. Hey, Valen Effort. Yeah, Valen Effort. Thanks very much, Justin. Giving us some info on uh, Mr. Tuiasa Sopo, and of course, Michigan, congratulations to them. They are playing for a national title tomorrow against Louisville. Good for them. Really good team, really good head coach as well. In the sixth inning, Verlander back to work. Vernon Wells leading it off. It's Wells, Suzuki, and Cervelli. Of course, Justin White went to Syracuse. We should mention that. That's why he's. We allow him to be an Orange fan. 1 1. Pulled foul on the ground. This much I will say. That uh, McGarry dude. Mitch, McG <laughs> Mitch McGarry. Is a beast. <laughs> Yeah, that McGarry dude is pretty good. Me. That uh, that entire team is really good, and it's going to be a terrific final against Louisville, who had to struggle to get past Wichita State. Got to work on that shot, though. <laughs> Here's the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Well, let's go back to the studio now. For a game break, we check in with Mickey York. <laughs> All right, Mick, thanks. Here we've had all the scoring in the second. 
a three run second inning for the Yankees. Highlighted by the two run homer by Jason Nix. Chris Davis of the Baltimore Orioles is off to a sizzling start. A lot of home runs and he's driven in quite a few runs already in first five games of the year. Yeah that's an understatement. There's a soft liner back up the middle on one hot. It's played but not in time off the glove. And the first baseman fielder Santiago had to go behind the bag to get to that ball. That is textbook Ichiro Suzuki looking for a fastball. He gets out in front but he still kind of stays back with his hands and just serves it right back up the middle. Very difficult play for Santiago even though he got it on one hop. It appeared that Suzuki would have been safe. It's like he has a tennis racket in his hand. The way he's just able to put the ball where he wants. It's good analysis of that swing. That is the sixth hit. For the Yankees that one of the infield variety here is Francisco Cervelli. Verlander must keep an eye on him. Strike one on Cervelli. Got him on the scoreboard back in the second with an RBI double off Verlander. Yankees had Russell Martin as their starting catcher. He went on to Pittsburgh and Martin brought his 21 home runs from last year with him. Stewart caught in the first game. We've seen Cervelli now in this series. There's a strike call. When Cervelli was coming up in the minor leagues in the Yankees organization, he was considered one of the better defensive catchers in the minors. I remember they used to talk about him a lot when Jorge Posada was getting the bulk of the uh, catching time for the Yankees. They did. Cervelli has knocked in four this year. Slow tap to Verlander who takes himself. The old one unassisted advancing the runner. Ichiro goes down to second base. Bring up Lyle Overbay. An 0 for 2 day today for Overbay. Fly out, strike out. Ground ball to second. Routine for Infante. And the inning is over. No runs, one hit, one left. Bottom of the six. Coming up.
fan poll question here at the ballpark. The Yankees on top by a score of three to nothing at this point. Here we go. How many games will the Tigers win this season? A 85 to 89. 90 to 94, 95 to 99, or 100 plus. Those are your choices. You can enter your vote by texting ACE followed by a space and the letter answer to 37338. Prince Fielder is leading it off in the sixth inning. Fielder Martinez, Tuiasa Sopo. Big guns have not been able to do anything so far today against CC Sabathia. Cabrera is 0 for 3. Fielder is 0 for 2 with a couple of punch outs. Here's the 0 1. One ball, one strike. Only three Tigers hits this afternoon, all of them singles against Sabathia. Ground ball to second. Cano will throw him out, one gone. 0 for 3 for the Prince. Well, we mentioned it was another big crowd here today, Rod, and uh, our numbers are starting to pile up now. As today's attendance was better than 39,000. How about that series total? Hundred and twenty seven thousand three hundred and thirty three have come out to watch the Tigers opening weekend at Comerica Park. It's the largest opening series in Detroit. Second most in team history. It's fouled back out of play. We expect the numbers will be just about at that same level every single night here. The Tigers a hot ticket. Victor is 0 for 2 in this game. Couple of fly balls. And the 0 1. Right at the third baseman, Euclid with a leaping play, and Victor again hits it hard and has nothing to show for it. <laughs> Kevin wasn't quite sure he had it in his glove. Two up, two down. It's four in a row set down by Sabathia following the walk to Jackson in the fifth. Rolled foul by Tuiasa Sopo. On base twice in his first start for the Tigers. Single and a walk. Matt last year played in the Mets organization at Triple A Buffalo. Hit 12 homers. Knocked in 57. In the minor leagues. Right back up the middle into center field. Base hit. On base three times today. He's got two hits and a walk off Sabathia. Simply went with the pitch that time. 92 mile per hour fastball outside. He didn't try to do too much with it. Just went right back up the box. His first time up, he got a change up and he pulled that ball to left field. Good concentration there by Toyasa Sopo. It'll keep the inning going for Brian Pena. Four Tigers hits now, all singles against CC. Way high, 1 0. Pena one for two. The 1 0 pitch. He'll get back out of play 1 1. Sabathia now has gone six straight seasons with at least 15 wins and at least 200 innings. So when you talk about the starters, as you look at his numbers today, these are two guys that are used to going deep into games, pitching a lot of innings every single season, and winning a lot of ball games. 
That's in the air. Foul ground first base side over Bay. To end the inning. No runs, one hit, one left. We go to the seven. of the Detroit Tigers and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Detroit Tigers. Well, here is the Bernstein advantage and the scouting report on a couple of guys that have been filling in for Derek Jeter. His replacements and their career totals. Eduardo Nunez started the first game in the series. He was, of course, hit by pitch and Knicks has taken over. Look at how many starts in career games for Jeter at the bottom. Over 2,500 games for the captain, number two. Get the Bernstein advantage. We go to bat for you. And going to bat for Jeter is Jason Nix here in the seventh inning. He's watching something last week on Derek Jeter. And uh, Jeter says he wants to own a Major League Baseball club when his career is all said and done. Well, he'll probably have no problem doing that. That's pulled down the left field line. And that ball is going to hook. Ooh, and it's foul. And that thing came close. Scouting report on Knicks is that he's a really good fastball hitter. And because of that, Verlander has thrown him one changeup early in the game. He hit it for a two run homer and just missed another homer with a breaking ball there. But if you're the guy in the yellow jacket out there, you got to catch that, don't you? Yeah. You should. I mean, it, it wasn't like it was a screaming rocket. Said the guy sitting safely in the booth. <laughs> but still, he was right in his hands. Nix with a two run shot in the second. He is one for two. Here's the 0 2. Outside, one ball, two strikes. Did he come close to catching it? Yeah, it was in and out of his hands, I think. He had a good long look at it. Here you go. You got it. I think his buddy interfered with. Oh, him. yeah, that's a good point. You know I mean? A little interference there. Whatever. <laughs> so he's hit the center field. He gave him another breaking ball, another off speed pitches, and apparently <laughs> Nick's went down to the bottom of the zone and got that one with two strikes. So the number nine hitter, two out of three in this game. Yanks now have seven hits. And Joe Girardi would not be shocked 
to see some movement here with the base runner or and give the bunt sign to Brett Gardner, who is a real good bunter. Try to push one more run across the board against Justin Verlander. Gardner is 0 for 3. Next draws a throw. Xfinity high high speed pitches for Verlander today 95 he threw that pitch back in the first inning and he's gone as low as 74 with a change up could be a slow curve ball bunted and foul we talk about uh, when you're up there bunting how you have to be patient and take your time. Gardner not necessarily sacrificing here look more like to me he was bunting for a base hit but take a look at the bat head once that bat head drops like it does right there you usually pop it up and it's usually a bad bunt right there. Verlander now inching toward 100 thrown in this game. As Rod mentioned earlier, Verlander probably will go to 110, 115 in this start. It's the first time the Tigers have gotten beyond the fifth inning from a starter. There is action in the Detroit bullpen. It's Octavio Dotel and Phil Coke. Again bunted, again foul. And again, the Tiger bullpen today, without Smiley, he's not available. And without Darren Downs, he's not available. Everyone else can go. How good was Smiley a couple of days ago? Well, it was perfect. 12 up, 12 down. Four innings in relief of Doug Fister. First major league save. Verlander about ready to throw his 100th pitch of the game. And it's looped down the left field line, slicing foul. If you missed uh, Smiley's effort on Friday, here you go. He had a good fastball that he was spotting at the knees at about 92 miles an hour. He kept the ball out of the middle of the plate. Through very few off speed pitches and did not look good opening day in Minnesota, but boy, did he make up for it Friday. Throwing darts. 0 2 on Gardner after a leadoff single here by Nix. Seventy three to twenty eight the ratio which is really good one hundred one pitches. Verlander really has only made a couple of. Uh, mistakes I guess you can call them you know one to Cervelli for a double and a one oh count. And then the home run that Knicks hit out of the ballpark for a two run shot. Now two and two. His issue has been the fact that CC Sabathia has been so good today, and Tigers hitters have done nothing against CC. Yeah, just about literally, they only have four hits against Sabathia. All of them singles. In fact, one of them an infield single. They'll go foul first base side. Verlander has four strikeouts on the day, and whether it be with a fastball, whether it be with the changeup, whether it be with a curveball. But here's that home run he gave up. It's a changeup. It's a 2 1 count, and a short, quick, compact swing by Nix got them two extra runs in the second inning. Slice to center field for Jackson, and finally Gardner is retired. One away. Well, neither team has really done a good job of putting the leadoff man on. The Yankees have done it twice. The Tigers have yet to do it in this game. Now 
Now Robinson Cano hit the ball hard his last time had a base hit one for three. You gonna do your uh, Operation DVD once again this year Operation Opening Day DVD is on schedule. We are indeed. Thank you for uh, mentioning that. How do you pull that off? They have not lost <laughs> since you started that. It's you like know, five years in a row, I think. Right. We've done it five straight years. The Tigers have won on opening day five straight years. So we'll continue to do it. What we do is uh, we put together a DVD of opening day and send it out to our troops, Tiger fans around the world that would like a copy. And uh, we have plans on expanding that program as well, maybe getting some veterans out to the ballpark to uh, catch some Tigers baseball. Verlander does a lot for it. Our veterans as well. So he does. He donates a suite to the veterans every single game. The difference is JV's pocketbook is a tad deeper than mine. I'm beginning to wonder now. <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder. Here's the 2 0. Popped him up. Back toward the seats. And Pena runs out of room. Well, regardless of the pocketbook, it's an outstanding gesture. Well, thank you. That you've started. And the Tigers are cooperating with a victory on opening day, which helps. Two balls and one strike. And Robinson Cano. Lead off single by Jason Nix. He's still at first base. Chase it back again. Robinson Cano sitting in a 2 1 count. Verlander already 107 pitches into the game. Does he dare throw him a fastball? Little chopper hit slowly towards second. Santiago, or Infante rather, to Santiago and the double play. For him to change up the back and roll over. Outstanding pitch by Justin Verlander. And it work. It's a 4 6 3. Ballpark, and this Wednesday the Tigers host the Toronto Blue Jays at 108 p.m. The first 10,000 fans receive an April in the D. Miguel Cabrera mini bobblehead courtesy of Fox Sports Detroit. Call 866-66-TIGER or visit Tigers.com. And here's what that uh, little mini bobblehead looks like. In fact, uh, the real Mickey is holding the mini. <laughs> so that's a great giveaway. Cabrera, not so sure. 
Well, glad to have you with us here this afternoon on what has been a pitching dominated afternoon, mostly by CC Sabathia. He has scattered four hits, right, and all of them singles for Detroit. CC's been awfully good today. Tigers were hot in the first couple of games of this series, and of course, we talked about CC not so good on opening day against the Boston Red Sox. 100 pitches that day, just five uh, innings pitched. He had a few strikeouts, but he walked four. But today, Able to spot that fastball, real good breaking balls today against a good Tigers lineup. What he got on JV today? He gave up the three runs in the one inning to the bottom of the lineup. Surprises. Well, he wishes he probably could get a couple of pitches back, and the one pitch he wished to get back uh, is the change up that he threw to Jason Nix. Uh, he left that ball up in the zone, and Nix does have some full power. He hit it out for a two-run shot. It's awfully difficult to sweep a team. The Tigers still have some advance to try and get that done. They have not swept the Yankees in the regular season since 2008. So. It's been a while. They've won the first two games of the series, but the Yankees lead this one here, and we'll see if the Detroit Bats can get going now as we head to the bottom of the seventh. Kids opening day in the ballpark today. A lot of kids at the yard enjoying Tigers baseball with their Tiger gear on. And for Detroit here in the seventh will be Infante, Santiago, and Jackson. Getting later into the afternoon, so we've got to bundle up the youngsters. Sabathia getting ready to go back to work. He's got the number eight hitter, Omar Infante, who is 0 for 2. Flight out his last time up to the left fielder, Vernon Wells. And it's strike one to Omar. Fonte came in hitting safely in his previous four consecutive games. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Off the end of the bat, make it 0 2 on Infante. So Sabathia will get to the 100 plateau here in the seventh inning. I mentioned he threw over 100 in his first start. He's been awfully good today. Ball high as Infante would not chase it. One and two. Off day tomorrow for the ball club, and then Blue Jays come to town. In the air, left side of the infield. A couple of steps to the grass. Nix hauls it in, one gone. Of Santiago. Tigers had such a big day offensively yesterday. And kind of strange to see them slow down this afternoon, but you can credit Sabathia for that. Santiago, 0 for 2, has put the ball in the air twice. In fact, Wells made a sliding catch on him his first time up. Ball one. The ratio on Sabathia. Here's the one one pitch. Two balls, one strike on Santiago. Ball high, now it's three and one. Strike call three and two. Had a shot there of their manager Joe Girardi talking to the pitching coach Larry Rothschild. Larry Rothschild on the right there. 
discussing how long they're going to allow CC to go today. Larry Rothschild is a former big league manager. In fact, was the first manager in the history of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, as they were known at that time. Real good pitching coach. We've got some pitching coaches that have gone on to manage in the big leagues: Bud Black, Marcel Latchman. And again, the three-two. Pulled foul. As a matter of fact, uh, Larry Rothschild was Jim Leland's first choice to be the pitching coach here with him when he took over in 06. At that time, Larry was Chicago Cubs. In his playing days, he played briefly here in Detroit back in the early 80s. Larry was a good pitcher, he had good fastball. Santiago continues to battle CC Sabathia here in the seventh. Bouncing ball left side, cut off at third by Euclid. Two gone. There is action in the Yankees pen loosening up Java Chamberlain to your left and David Robertson to your right. David Robertson right now, Java going back down to sit down it appears. Cervelli out to the mound now with a two out talk as Austin Jackson steps in. AJ's been on base two more times in this one, two walks. Since the start of last season, Austin leads all American League players with 72 walks out of that leadoff spot. How about that? That is a really telling stat for a guy that they tried to cut down his strikeouts coming into last season. Kind of gives you an idea, too, of just how much the game has changed. Ricky Henderson, he was walking a hundred times a year. Yeah. One of the best leadoff hitters of all time, if not the best leadoff hitter of all time. I would say you would be hard pressed to find someone that had a better body of work than Ricky Henderson as a leadoff hitter. He was fun to watch. Two and on Jackson. And he'll take it's two and one. Jackson last year, career high in Homer's RBI's batting average. Fabulous job as the Tigers leadoff man. Now the 2 1. Pulled foul. 2 and 2 on Jackson. And a souvenir on kids' opening day here at the ballpark. Jackson, as you know, was an outstanding college basketball player or high school basketball player. Was recruited to play basketball in college. Eventually signed to play baseball. Three and two. I still love the story about Jackson. He tells he was going to go to Georgia Tech to play point guard there. Illinois was actually recruiting him for baseball and basketball, and he thought, you know, Illinois might be a, a pretty good place to go until he saw the baseball field and. His recruiting trip, which by the way, I think was in December. It was snow January. on it. It was covered with snow, and AJ said, I'm out of here. <laughs> See you later. The 3 2. Swing and a miss. And Sabathia has a 1 2 3 seventh inning on the way to the eighth.
Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers, visit ChevyDetroit.com, see why Chevy drives the Motor City. And by Wallside Windows, the official window company of Fox Sports Detroit. Three to nothing, Yankees have the lead as we go to the top of the eighth at the ballpark. On a nice day for baseball here in the Motor City, wrapping up this three game series. And again, a huge crowd here this afternoon 39,829. A lot of folks in standing room. Three runs, seven hits for the Yanks. Verlander back to the hill, and he throws a strike to Kevin Euclid. No runs, four hits for Detroit. 108 pitches for Verlander through seven innings. One ball, one strike. Verlander got a double play in the seventh inning, which helped out the cause. And perhaps gave him a shot to get back out here in the eighth. Bouncing ball left side. Cabrera has it at third. One gone. Yukeless now, two out of three. Or one out of three with a walk. That'll bring up Travis Hafner. It's also going to bring the skipper out. So Verlander will get one out here in the eighth. And give way to the bullpen. Wall side windows pitching change. Verlander allows three early runs, but nothing after that. We'll be back. Justin Verlander done for the afternoon seven and one third he gave up three early runs but nothing after the three run second he struck out four and he will depart now and turn the baseball over to Phil Coke and Phil Coke pitching in his third game has one save and he also blew one save that was in Minnesota. He will face Travis Hafner here with the bases empty and one out. First pitch is lined right by a diving Omar Infante. And Hafner lumbers to first base with a one out single. 
Phil Coke using all of his pitches these days out of that Tigers bullpen fastball can get up to the mid 90s also a nice little breaking ball and also it has incorporated his change up the last couple of years. Here's Vernon Wells. One for four against Coke with a home run. Get back out of play. That's where you have to pitch Vernon if you want to get him out. You have to stay away from him, whether it be the fastball or whether it be the changeups. He likes to pull the baseball if you try to get inside on him. And that's when Vernon does most of his damage. Coke was dominant against the Yankees last year in the postseason, five and two thirds scoreless innings, and he saved two of the four wins over the Yankees in the CS. Pena smothers it. It's good to see Vernon off to a good start and smiling once again. You know he's a proud man, and even though he was making a lot of money, no player wants to sit on the bench, and he sat on the bench a lot in L.A. That he did, and I think the Angels picked up quite a bit of that money that was due to him uh, with the trade. Here's the one-one. He is known throughout the league as a Really good guy, one of the nice guys in baseball. You root for guys like him. Top notch pro on and off the field. Have you ever seen any of that artwork that his dad does? I was about to bring that up. Yeah. When he was in Toronto, I saw some of that work. It's really very good. Swing and a miss. Nice change up there. We talked about Coke and the fact that he has incorporated that pitch. The last couple of seasons. This is a good one. You can't throw a better change up than this one. Located beautifully. Ground ball. Fair ball inside the bag at third. Hafner is on his way to third base. Ball touched by a fan. It's a two base hit for Vernon Wells. And we gave you the scouting report on Vernon Wells. The fact that he loves to pull the baseball. You can see the target there is outside. And Pena had his target outside. Phil Coke missed with the location. That ball was down and in. And he's able to hit it right past Miguel Cabrera. So Hafner is going to come out of the ball game. Wells has his first double this season. Eduardo Nunez was unable to start today. Can pinch runs, so he is at third. Infield coming in for Detroit, facing Ichiro. Second and third one out already three nothing Yanks. Ball one. Ichiro's had nice numbers against Phil Coke. 417. Two and oh. Octavio Dotel still heating in the Detroit bullpen. He was warming up earlier along with Cope. Nine hits for the Yankees, only four for Detroit. There's the strike call. Two and one. Ichi wrote today with an infield hit reaching on a fielder's choice and scoring a run. Go 
Hoke staying away. Three and one the count on Ichiro. Cervelli waiting his turn on deck. Driven in the air to right field. Hunter backing up. Tagging up Nunez. He'll come in to score. Throw coming to third, not in time. Sack fly, RBI for Ichiro. Big run there for the Yanks. They now lead 4-0. Both runners advance, two outs. Here is Cervelli. Got him on the board back in the second with the RBI double against Verlander. That made it one nothing. Later in that inning, a two-run homer by Jason Nix. Right back up the middle into center field. Going to drop base hit. That'll get another run in. Wide turn and Cervelli will scamper back to the bag. His second hit, second RBI of the day. And it's 5 nothing Yankees. Going to bring up Overbay. So Coke has surrendered a single double, a sack fly, and another base hit. <laughs> 0 and 1 on Overbay, 0 for 3 today. And in his career against Coke, 2 for 6 against him. The 0 1. <laughs> Cervelli and Nix, the 7 and 9 hitters, have done some damage today. 4 for 7. They've had nice games. Four RBIs between them. One and two on Overbay. Hit hard to center field. Jackson on the move, and that is that for the Yankees. They had a couple of runs, but for the Tigers in the bottom of the eighth, it'll be two, three, and four coming up.
23rd through the 25th and take advantage of the Super Spring Special. Upper box seats are half price, only $13. Call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. And it's been all Yankees today. They have really shackled the Tigers. CC Sabathia has been pretty good. His last eight starts right here at Comerica Park. He was two and five with an ERA approaching seven, but he got after him today. He was locating his pitches beautifully at the bottom of the zone. The fastball right around 92, 93 all afternoon. He threw some outstanding breaking balls and some changeups. CC today looked about as good to me as we've seen him in a while and it also looked like he may have taken it personal the fact that he did not pitch well opening day against the Boston Red Sox losing that ball game to them. And a wall side windows pitching change CC is done for the afternoon David Robertson takes over. Well that's usually how they draw it up uh, when they have a chance to win it's Robertson for the eighth and Mariano for the ninth. Torrey Hunter leads it off for Detroit and looks at a strike. It is five nothing Yankees bottom of the eighth. Yeah, Robertson's got a good fastball. He can get all the way up into the mid 90s. Very few breaking balls. He comes right after you with heaters. Torrey shoots one foul back out of play on two. Torrey 0 for 6 career against David Robertson. Only four Detroit hits today. That's it. Inside and high, one and two. Robertson appeared in 65 games last year out of the bullpen, lost seven games, but had a really good ERA of 2.67. It was the year before that, though, that really opened up some eyes. Popped up, heading back of the seats. And out of play it goes. Robertson, two years ago in 2011, had an ERA of, get this, 1.08. Look at that. Is that good? I would say it's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of good. 70 appearances and a 108 earned run average. Hunter steps out. Hunter Cabrera fielder for the Tigers here in the eighth. Pulled on the ground at third. Up being eight up. Euclid. And whistled right by him actually. Would he hit that hard? Torrey has lightning quick hands. Robertson tried to sneak that two strike fast but 90 miles an hour by Torrey Hunter inside and he dropped the bat head on he about killed Kevin Eugle is down at third base he drilled that ball <laughs> oh watch your lips <laughs> up went the glove that's another multi hit game for Torrey Hunter that makes it five out of his first six that's what Torrey Hunter did a lot of as a very young player in Minnesota first few years in Los Angeles but we've watched Torrey Hunter since putting on a Tigers uniform this year and last year in LA how he's incorporated right field into his game that is by the way the first Tiger leadoff man that has reached base in this game the keys to Sabathia's success this afternoon, keeping that leadoff man off the bases, putting a five spot on the board, no problem for this Tigers offense. Robertson going to have to deal with the meaty part of the Tigers lineup. Three, four, five, check swing. They want the appeal. Oh, run around. Hunter Wendelstead said you're out. I think Hunter Wendelstead is right. And uh, that's why you had no argument there from Cabrera. He knew it. He asked for the appeal too. Which still kind of uh, makes us scratch our head. 
Here's Fielder. Oh for three for Prince. Sabathia struck him out twice and then got him to ground out to second base. Sabathia dealt any big league pitcher that can put up zeros for seven innings against this offense, you're dealing. Not going to happen very often. I promise you that. Yankees have doubled up the hit totals in this game 10 5 over the Tigers. Just got a piece of it. Martinez will be next. Owen two to center field and it'll drop base hit. Torrey got a good read on it hits to third as it gets by Gardner but not far enough and the Tigers now have runners at first and third. The second two strike hit that Robertson has given up in this inning of course Torrey Hunter it is extremely hard uh, down toward third base and Prince he kind of gets down on the label a little bit he's so strong he's able to muscle that ball in front of Bart Gardner in center field who played very very deep. Torrey never stopped running never slowed down. So the Tigers have something going here. It's the first time all game they've gotten a runner past second. Doing it against one of the top setup men in the league. Now Victor Martinez. Two for five against Robertson. Ball and one strike on Victor. Again, hitting the ball hard a couple of times in this game, but 0 for 3, and now 1 for 9 in the series. Those numbers do not tell the entire story. Victor trying to come up with a big one out hit here in the eighth, get the Tigers on the board. Running out of time, down 5 nothing. Neither runner will advance. Hunter started the inning with a single and then fielder with a one out hit. Strike call 2 2 on Victor Martinez. Tui Asasopo waiting on deck, but Jim Leland has Andy Dirks on his bench. He also has Alex Avila on the bench. And the 2 2 in the air, center field. Gardner coming in. He'll make the catch. Runners will tag but hold. Not deep enough. 
So two outs. Well, as soon as the game ends, our coverage continues with Tigers Live here from manager Jim Leland and the players. Plus, we'll break down the game and show you all of the highlights. Tigers Live immediately after the game right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Leland's going to stay with Tuiasa Sopo, who has been on base three times in this game. Two singles and a walk, and those at bats against Sabathia. He also has huge power, and uh, Jim hoping that he could possibly run into one against Robertson. And he looks at strike one fastball from Robertson. I don't know for sure, but if the score was say three to two or five to four, he probably pinch hits here for a great Toyasa Sopo with Dirks or Avila. There's a strike. The Yankees only have one left hander in their bullpen, and that is Boone Logan. He's pitched in the first two games of the series, so uh, Jim knew. That he would not come into this game. Ooh, he went after one. And down he goes, and Robertson able to pitch out of the jam. Tigers strand two. Let's go to the night. Not been able to do a whole lot in this ball game as we check out our Comerica Bank game summary. The Yankees' second inning was the biggest inning. Two run homer by Nix in that frame. Three, four, and five hitters for the Tigers struggling this afternoon. One for 12 after having a really good first two games in the series. And so we travel to the ninth. And it is Jason Nix leading it off for New York against the new pitcher, Octavio Dotel. He did nice work out of that bullpen last year for the Tigers. 57 games, five wins, three losses, 62 strikeouts, only 12 walks. As a manager at the back of the game, you want guys to come into the game and throw strikes and not give away free passes. And Dotel is one of those guys. Soft line drive to left. That's a base hit. These guys are on fire today. That they are. 
And he's our Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. Got himself a change up early in this game. And drilled it to left from the Tigers bullpen. It's about that time where uh, Jimmy Johns would uh, sound pretty good. For sure. Here is Brett Gardner. That's 11 hits now for the Yankees. Three of them from their number nine hitter. Ball one. Gardner is hitless. Average now at 125. Back up the middle into center. There's another hit for the Yankees. Nix is going to go to third, and they have runners at the corners. Nobody out. Twelve hits now for the Yankees. The greatest of all time in the closers role, Mariano Rivera, in his final season in the major leagues, warming up. Here is Cano with the bases or runners at first and third. The infield coming in as they try and cut down. Any more damage already down five nothing here in the nine. And Robinson Cano and Octavio Dotel were teammates on that uh, Dominican team, World Baseball Classic. Back up the middle. Santiago going to throw it first to get the out there. Wasn't quite sure what to do with it for a while. One of those in between plays, the infield's playing in. And so Omar's not there to take the feet at second base. Santiago looking out the corner of the right eye, making sure that Nick stayed put at third base and then somehow getting the out at first base of Cano before he got there. I initially thought he had a chance to throw to second to start a double play, but you're right. The Infante wasn't there. The infield drawn in just didn't have enough time to get to the bag. So that's going to bring up Euclid with runners at second and third. Infield still in. In for a strike, 0 and 1. They get 0 and 2 on Euclid, who this afternoon has a double and a walk. Really put a charge into the Chicago White Sox last year if they acquired him from the Boston Red Sox. It had just run its course in terms of his relationship with the Red Sox. But he almost single handedly got the White Sox to the playoffs last year. He sure did. They were having a difficult time finding someone to uh, play third base and produce offensively. And uh, Euclid was able to do that. Checked it. Negative. Hunter Wendelstead has had quite a few appeals today. One ball and two strikes. Octavio Dotel takes over for Phil Cope. Verlander went seven and one third this afternoon, gave up three runs. Again, fouled off. Tigers will have the bottom of their lineup seven, eight, nine, two up in the bottom of the ninth inning. So we'll need some table setters for them to have a chance. They get the big boys up.
But the mission right now for Dotel is to make sure the stays five nothing. And he won't do that. Base hit to left field. That'll get two more runs in for the Yankees. And the lead balloons to seven to nothing. Two runs in the eighth, two runs in the ninth. And Brennan Bosch will pick up a bat now and pitch it. Series for Euclid continues. Two more hits today, a couple of RBIs. And he fouls it away 0 1. Opportunity for Bosch to play with the Yankees after he was released by Detroit midway through spring camp. The Yankees signed him the very next day with the injuries they have had. Bosch has hit the ball hard in the series. He's even made a terrific play out in right field. Outside, one ball, one strike. Are you surprised that Brennan just could never really get it together and recapture what he had done early in his rookie season. Yeah I am kind of surprised because he's got a lot of physical skills he's big and strong and physical. A lot of power strong arm decent speed for a big guy. But uh, once the confidence leaves. Uh, it's tough to get it back. And uh, clearly in spring training Brennan. Uh, didn't have a lot of confidence at least after the injury he just wasn't playing. As well as we've seen him play in the past, but he got a fresh start playing for the Yankees now. And I talked to him yesterday, he's having a good time. Okay, back out of play. Two balls, two strikes on Bosch. Girardi hoping to avoid the sweep at the hands of the Tigers here, and he's leading comfortably late in this game, seven to nothing. Well, you brought it up a few innings ago how difficult it is, uh, regardless of what the momentum feels like going into that game where you're looking to sweep. It's tough to sweep a big league team. The Tigers had not done it against the Yankees since April of 08, and unless they have a huge comeback here in the bottom of the ninth. Looks like that number will stay intact. Toronto Blue Jays shut out by the Boston Red Sox today, 13 to nothing. That offense. To the right side of the infield. Two gone. Well, sometimes you just have to throw the numbers out the window. Uh, Sabathia's last eight starts right here at Comerica Park, not very good. Prince sizzling hot coming into the series. And into today, but uh, CC Sabathia just made some outstanding pitches against Prince Fielder today, and Prince uh, just didn't get it done against his former teammate in Milwaukee. That's our Bell Tire pitch by pitch. Can't do it every day; it just doesn't happen. New. No. Here is Vernon Wells. I'm sure after this game is over, Jim Leland and several of the Tigers in that dugout will be giving CC Sabathia a little bit of credit. He definitely got it done today and he looked outstanding after a bit of a rocky first start for the Yankees since the beginning of the 2006 season. And no pitcher has won more games in Verlander. CC Zabathia second on that list. Strike call. And if you go back to uh, 2001 CC's rookie year. 191 victories, more than anybody in baseball. And the one two. Ball high, two balls, two strikes. Dotel now has thrown 22 pitches in this ninth inning after taking over for Phil Coke.
roll foul. Looks like it's going to take a little longer this year for the Tigers uh, in their bullpen to kind of sort itself out. Well, they had some run pat rough patches in Minnesota. This was a rough patch here today. Now to tell with the 2 2 and it's off the plate 3 and 2. Thirteen hits today for the Yanks, six for Detroit. They've broken open a three-nothing game with two in the eighth, two in the ninth, and the three-two high fly ball toward left, hooking toward the corner, still hooking, and Tuiasa Sopo gave it a try but couldn't get it. He's had to run up on that wall a couple of times in this game today. First start here at Comerica Park out in left field for Tuyasa Sopo. And he walked it. Two odd base on balls. It'll put two aboard. Well, just like we promised you earlier in the game, it is Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. And we're going to flash back to 1984, opening weekend of the season. Jack Morris gets Harold Baines to ground out for the second out of the inning. And then Ron Kittle strikes out, and Jack Morris throws a no hitter. Hey, you had a front row seat for that. Unbelievable. What a moment. I didn't see you jump into that pile. When did you jump in? I may have been a little tardy getting out there. <laughs> I might have been in the spread already. <laughs> At least you're honest. <laughs> what a day it was, man. That was fun to watch. Ichiro, the batter. He's ahead of the gal 1 0. Strike called on Ichiro 1 1. RBI in a sack fly in his last at bat. Trying to pick up two Yankees here with two outs, two runs already in against Dotel. Ichiro backs away and it's a strike one and two. And Dotel now about to throw his 30th pitch of this inning. Now the one two back out of play. More action in the Detroit bullpen. Brian Villarreal. In the air toward left center field. Tuiasa Sopo will run it down. And that is that. Two more runs in as we go to the bottom of the ninth.
Blackberry 10 at Bat Delivers Detroit Tigers Baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text that bat to 31826 or visit tigers.com for more details. Mariano Rivera is about to check into this ball game. With more on that, we check in with Justin White. Well, Mario, Comerica Park is the first stop on the Mariano Rivera farewell tour. The future Hall of Famer is retiring at the end of the season, and since this is the Yankees' only trip here to Detroit this season, prior to the game today, Tigers manager Jim Leland presenting Rivera with a plaque on behalf of the Tigers. Of course, Mariano Rivera, one of the game's all-time greats when it comes to closers. He hasn't blown a save against the Tigers, guys, since, get this, 1999, 23 straight saves. That last blown save was actually at Tiger Stadium. He's never blown a save in this ballpark. Unbelievable. Unbelievable indeed, Justin, and uh, what a career for the greatest of all time, headed to the Hall of Fame once his career is done, and those numbers... Here they are for his career. He has been the model of consistency. 609 career saves for Mariano Rivera. And as good as he is a pitcher and how great he has been in the Yankees uniform, uh, he's even better off the field. Well, not a safe situation here today, but that doesn't matter. He's getting some work in, and he has just been absolutely unbelievable. With that cut fastball, there's a broken bat. One hopper to second base, Cano. Pena's out. This is where he uh, is right now in the all-time major league ranks in each of those categories. First in all-time saves with 609. Of course, he suffered the uh, the knee injury last year. Otherwise, that probably would have been his last year. It would have been. He didn't want to go out like that, and you really can't blame him. Here's Omar Infante. He's gotten it done for the most part with one pitch, a cut fastball. He doesn't throw it nearly as hard as he used to when he was a lot younger. It was 95, 96. And it's right around 89 to 91 these days. But it still has good movement. Took over as the Yankees' full time closer in 1997 after. His apprenticeship under uh, John Wetland, who is their closer in the mid 90s, and uh, Rivera has just been just a, uh, a mark of consistency year in and year out. He has saved as many as 53 in a single season. It's in the air to shallow right field, and it's going to drop base hit off the end of the bat of Infante. Mariano has had a lot of teammates over the years that he has tried to teach that cut fastball to. But none could master it the way that he mastered it. Here are the all time save leaders. Trevor Hoffman, the only other pitcher in Major League history to record as many as 600, along with Rivera. Here's Santiago. Ground ball foul. I, I wonder why Rod nobody has been able to at least come close to mastering that pitch like the bear. It's fascinating. It's a great question. It really is. But nobody has many have tried. The 0 1. This is also the last uh, season that you will see. Uh, number 42. On a major league uniform worn by a player during the regular season. Mariano is the last player. Active player wearing number 42 and when he's done. All number 42s. Will be retired in honor of Jackie Robinson. I guess the only time you'll see that is on Jackie Robinson Day when. Everybody, everybody in baseball wears number 42. Soft line ride that drops in base hit. A couple of singles for the Tigers. Which gives you an idea of just how special and what Jackie Robinson meant to the game of baseball. His number will be retired by all 30 major league clubs. Well, you see it at every ballpark now, and as you can see it here at Comerica Park as well, out on the wall in right center field, the number 42.
Jackson looks at a ball. Do you think that guy knew that since Rivera was coming in, we'd talk about that number 42, so he went out there and stood right in front of it? He may have. He got some, he got some major air time. He got some TV time. <laughs> he knew it. Foul down the right field line. Seven nothing Yankees lead it. In the bottom of the ninth. Strike call. Tigers have not been shut out in 235 regular season games. They'll need a base hit here to get on the board. Two and two now on Austin Jackson. He's been on base two more times today, a couple of walks. Two and two, the count stays. Corey Hunter will be next. Ball club has an off day tomorrow, and then the Blue Jays come to town. The revamped Toronto Blue Jays. Grounded foul. Two outs away from getting their second win of the season. If the Tigers fail to come back in this game, they'll drop to three and three on the new year. Infante and Santiago with base hits against Mariano Rivera here in the ninth. And he just missed with it. Three and two. Center field. Gardner is on the run. He gets there, slides on the track. Nice running play. Fonte moves up to third. Gardner uh, must have not known how much room he had because he catches the baseball and then he goes into a slide. When it appeared to me that they really didn't need to leave his feet. So two outs. Here's Tory Hunter. And he rolls that one foul. Rivera's thrown 19 pitches here in the ninth inning, taking over for Robertson. Tigers got a couple of singles against Robertson could not score and they've gotten two hits against Rivera here in the ninth. Now it's 0 and 2. Yankees are off to Cleveland after this one here today. Try to check it one around and Hunter strikes out and Rivera will strand a couple as the Tigers unable to score here in the ninth and drop a 7 nothing decision today to the New York Yankees. Back to floor from Comerica Park.